Hi everyone, I want to talk today about nature and especially about nature empowering us and we empowering nature. It's something we have kind of lost that connection we don't do anymore. We have lost the feeling for nature. And yet I know all around the world, there's different groups trying to help us to connect back to nature. But each and every one of us has to make that decision as well. And just look at the power of this beautiful tree. Um, this copper beech, you know, it's, it's so, would I say prune color, red, it's deeper than a red. It's just so, so beautiful. And of course we have named this tree, it has a name. We call it Noah's tree. Um, a, young, a young boy we used to know. And then look at all of the wildflowers. Just, just look at them. And most of us have kind of taken this wildflower for just a weed. But it is called, um, it's a herb, Robert, and it's called another name as well. Um, but I think it's so, so beautiful. You know, I love the way the shades can go, you know, this beautiful, tiny little daisy, this pink color. And then down here, you have the same daisy again. Just look at it. And it's, it's this blue color. Isn't it just beautiful? Just, just look at it. And then I see another one that is kind of a different color again. And we have forgotten how nature empowers us and how we can empower nature and give back to nature so that it will keep the air clean so that we stay healthy and that nature stays healthy as well. And even look at, at these here, aren't they so, so beautiful? I just love yellow because yellow always reminds me of gold. And I know the bees love all of these. And of course, just looking in there, seeing the branches of this magnificent tree just coming down, almost, you know, touching the ground, not far off. I just think it's, uh, just feel the power of it. Just feel the energy of it. We have forgotten how nature empowers us because now we go for a walk or we're going cycling and we don't think of anything in one sense. We only, you know, might be listening to music or, you know, a radio station or a podcast, but we're losing the connection to the power of nature all around you. That's empowering you to cycle, to walk. We're, what would you say, not even looking at it, not even taken in its beauty, but we're not allowing ourselves to feel the energy that it's giving us. You know, this is how you are alive. Without nature helping to empower us, you wouldn't be alive. It does so much for us. It cleans the air. It, you know, keeps our water clean. It kind of makes all our food grow from the earth. And yes, it's doing its best to empower us. And that beautiful angel of the earth, you know, she twists and turns to help to save us in so many different ways. And we don't want to give back. We, in a sense, all of the time, just want to take. And we shouldn't be just thinking of taking. You know, we should be thinking of giving back. Just look at this beautiful grass. Just look at that color there. 
isn't it beautiful? And that's wild grass and that's feeding insects and the birds and it's seeding. I remember as a kid running through long grass like this with the angels and just allow myself to feel the energy as I would run through, you know, and now that I think of it, I was much, what would I say, I would become lighter. And I know that was nature doing its part, empowering me to be full of energy. And I was empowering nature to burst forth its energy to empower me. And I was giving it, oh, look at this. Do you see the little, I don't know if you can get it, blue dragonfly. Um, where did I see that one go? Oh, it's gone over here. Do you think it would stop for a moment? I don't know whether you got it or not, but it's the first dragonfly I have seen this year. Well, I saw two of them, two of them were there. But just look at all of this wild grass. I just think, you know, even the way nature, the sun, another planet, an incredible distance away from us is empowering us as well, is giving us energy. And we can't live without nature. And yet for some reason, we think we can, but you can't, unless you want to in the future, because this was one of the futures I was shown that if we don't take care of our planet and we still have time to save it, but we're still not doing enough, we'd be living in a bubble, you know, and even inside that bubble, I was watching the children of the future saying, you know, looking at photographs of birds and butterflies and wondering why we killed all of nature. And that means you as well. We just have to take um, responsibility and here at the sanctuary, we're trying to save as much of nature as we possibly can for the future. You know, even feeling this grass here and feeling the change as I run my hand over it, feeling the change in the vibration that this grass is giving. It's just lovely. And I wish all of you could be so connected to nature that you would be able to see what I see and feel what I see. You know, because it, it's, I think people at the moment don't even realize how much they are alive and we are very much alive. But where do you get your energy from? You know, I know we have a little thing inside of us that we got from long ago that gives us a lot of energy. But we're being empowered by nature as well to give us more energy and to feed us in every way. So I'm going to take you for a little walk now into the forest. So if you come along with me, And I just show you this other little tree. This is um, another little copper beech, as you can see. And we are thinking about taking the other trees from around it so that it will survive because it has to come from the very old seed of Noah's tree. And as far as I know, what the forester had said, Noah's tree is about 500 years old or more. So this again would be a very old seed. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we have this little one here. We did have another little one in here, if you come in, but I have been 
very disappointed. We had left it saying if we don't move it, maybe it will survive. But there's no green leaves on it. Um, so we, we might move it and we were thinking of maybe doing a little test on it and give it a feed in the hopes that it will come back to life again. I asking God and the angels to please bring it back to life because again it was that copper color. So I was a bit disappointed this year but maybe it's just not getting enough light in and around it. So like in a, when I saw first, the, like we're here three years now, I think it is, it was only that height and it was growing no problem. And now this year, for some reason, there's not a leaf on it at all. So we have to try and work a miracle there. And if we're able to work a miracle, I will tell you all about it another time. So I'm going to head up now into the forest. I'm going to bring you down this lovely little path down towards the river. And just look at the beauty of all of this. It's just so wild. And again, it's just to connect to nature, you know, to feel the earth. Look at the earth, you know, beneath your feet and know that in this tiny little bundle here, there's probably loads of little critters, you know, but they're so tiny you can't see them. And they're living there. And we're walking on them, but they're still surviving. I just love to feel the softness. You know, when you become more connected to nature, you feel the softness of the earth. The earth beneath your feet feels like, you know, this soft cushion that just moves a slight little bit. So maybe when you're out walking, see, can you feel that every now and then maybe? And just be so aware of allowing the earth to empower you and you to empower the earth, you to play your part to protect it so that you can continue to enjoy it. Just even when you look into the wild forest there and hear the birds, they're up there somewhere. But just to hear them is lovely. I just love hearing the call. And even when you look at a piece of old tree that's full of woodworm and some of it has been pecked away here, I wouldn't be surprised that that was a woodpecker because we have woodpeckers here in the forest because the way it's all gone sandy that it was looking for little critters. Um, the woodpecker needs dead wood, needs dead trees. So just because the tree is dead doesn't mean you should just go and cut it down because loads of creatures and birds depend on the dead wood as well for nesting. But the woodpecker gets a lot of its food from dead wood. You know, little critters inside. And by the way, when I say little critters, Sometimes I mean like, you know, all the insects, but sometimes when I say a little critter, it can be a little mammal running around, um, even a hedgehog. I just have to smile. I love coming down here in the evening time and hearing the woodpecker because that's usually the time I would hear it. Oh, look at this. Look what nature has done here. Many times you go for a walk and you don't actually allow yourself to see. Just look at this. 
you know, spiders have set up webs and and the webs are catching not flies, but at the moment little pieces of bark, dead leaf from the trees, all kinds of things. And just think of how incredible that is. A little insect can make something as strong as that, because even when you touch it, it's quite strong. It sticks to your fingers and it's catching seed. If you notice, you know, the seed inside, there's loads of seeds there. See this, I'm trying to, I don't want to break it, but over here you'll see a load of seeds just there. Oh, and this one might be better. Do you see all the seeds all gathered together in the piece of cobweb? I guess that's part of the spider's work as well. Because I know the spider here in Ireland, well, as far as I know, doesn't need to eat the seed. It eats other bugs. But yet it's cobweb is collecting seeds that have been blown in the air. So again, the spider must be doing a, a big job for keeping the environment alive and the turnover of everything, what we call the ecosystem. And I see something else I love. This is why we, you go for a walk or, or you're even out looking after your garden Tell yourself you want to become connected to it and notice and see, look at this, this tree here <coughs> has other branches, but do you know these branches? And that's a good sign for here because the light is getting in. If light is not getting in, a tree won't grow other branches, but branches are actually trees, individual trees themselves, a copy of this. And we never think of that. When we look at a tree, we think it's just one big organism, if that's the right word, but it's not, it's a multitude because each one of these is a tree as well, each branch. Isn't that fantastic? A copy of itself? I love it. So I thank the tree. Keep growing, please. So now we're still walking down towards the river. And of course, when you're walking down towards the river, remember you know, as I had to say, there's broken sticks on the ground that have fallen from the trees. A critter can even have dug a hole. So you do have to watch where you're walking. So we'll walk this way. I thought I saw the flicker of something of a critter, but I can't see it now. <laughs> It disappeared into the trees. Sure, look at this. Isn't this lovely to walk under? You know, nature making its own canopy. I, I just love it. And we did, in the winter time, we had a lot of different trees that fell over, but we're just leaving them there. And again, you have to leave them there for nature. You know, again, for all the critters, you know, for all the birds, all the different insects, like you can see them. And this must be one that was so decayed, it's just like powder. You know, it's, it's, it's so broken. But that is very good for the soil. The tree 
what's left of it is giving back to the earth. And that's the thing for us to remember. We have to give back. We can't just keep on taking and taking because then we'll starve the earth. We'll starve our planet. We'll starve nature. And then we will become starved. And we already are because we have drought in countries. We have food shortage. And we even have, you know what I mean, land that was once green like this turned to desert. So I ask you to please connect back to nature and do all you can to help nature, even in your garden when you're out walking. You know, don't throw your paper away or your cigarette butt. Recycle everything. Just do that for yourself. We can hear branches moving. And even when you look at these beautiful trees, because we have got light to come into the forest, they're growing branches out of their trunks. And that's good because before the forest was so dark that the trees just grew tall and they were top heavy. So we need a lot of them to grow some branches so that maybe they will survive. But of course we want as many seedlings to come up from all of the old trees. And I, I don't know if you know, here in the sanctuary, we were told this is a rainforest. And that's because some of the trees are just so old. Um, and I'm delighted with that. And I can hear birds down there squawking, whatever they're doing. <laughs> So we're down along a beautiful wild river and you can see where this tree has come down, just literally split there and right into the water. We probably will have to remove it because it might block the river altogether, but we'll work on it probably a bit more into the summer. So you have to step over this branch here. But I just want to show you this. I think this is just incredible the way you can see a tree splits. You know, it just literally last winter opened as if someone got an ax at it and just tore like a piece of paper. And then you have even more happened here, but it does make lovely little walks. But we'll probably have to do either remove it or put a support under it. But I love this too. And um, we'd have to check after the winter that everything is safe as well. But isn't it beautiful what nature does? You know, what nature can make and, and if we could stop again and feel that power and connect. Like I'm standing here and I can feel the energy from this tree that has, how would I say, broken in many different ways. There's a piece coming that way. It has fallen across this tree. It's coming down. There's even another piece in here you know, another piece of an old tree that has kind of falling. If you look in underneath, it's already split and is lying over the river. Like, it's just incredible what nature does and how powerful it is. And we forget about that power and we forget that we can absorb that power as well. The thing is about nature, it wants to share. And I love that. It will share with us everything. But we have to give back. It can't keep giving us everything because then we will only make nature fight us. And at the moment, we are having climate change no matter how much in denial you are of it. 
I'm very sorry to say, but our climate is changing. And it's changing because we have put so much pollution into the air in, and into the earth. We've done, we've hurt our planet so much, but we didn't realize it, I know at first, but we do now and we can change. We can give our planet and ourselves a chance to live because we need to live and we need to enjoy and soak up the energy and what would I say fly on the air if you like you know and um, be happy and joyful and look at all the incredible blessings that we have like even just still walking along here and seeing the river and all this wildlife but again, you have to be careful where you walk because again, another piece of branch has come down. And I think this is something new that has come down because I didn't notice this. Oh, it has. It's like it's a branch from, oh, up there. If you can see it, you see the tree, not this one, but the other one. I think that's where, yeah, if you follow it, you might see it better this side. Yeah, look, the way it has split off and come right down and across. You can see the freshness of it. So the sad thing is, the top of that tree is probably going to come down in the winter. And you see that beautiful forest over there? It's wetland, it hasn't been touched. And there's so many animals living in there and birds. It's like, a, it is part of the rainforest, but it's the far side of the river and I can't protect it. So I'm all the time praying I'd have to say that someone will give it and we could protect it, not just for those that are living now, but for the future as well. It would be just so sad because it does go for quite a few miles to see it filled in, houses built. We need to save that rainforest. So I'm all the time asking God, please let someone just decide to give it to us so we can protect it and put it into the trust. Because again, you know, how would I say, I've even seen, I don't know what you call it, but I think it's a, a little um, crane and it's black and white and it's Sometimes, I don't think it's even really as big as a blackbird, maybe as tall, but not as fat, you know, the way a blackbird is. And sometimes I would see it here and it's just going up and down and, and moving along. Now it's not one of those other birds that are, that do the same thing like that. This one actually is always in the water. It just loves the water and you would see it on a stone and it trying to get some insects. You don't see it often, um, but it is, it is around. And of course the kingfisher is around as well. I've seen that many times and it's just flying by. And I know they have so many places to nest that are safe, but please God, somehow, we get that lovely forest. Don't know how, but I just want to protect it. I want to join it up and give nature a chance. And in giving nature a chance, our planet, we're giving ourselves a chance, a chance to live because we're taking that chance away.
I definitely wouldn't like the children of the future and the adults and moms and dads to be living in a bu bubble. You know, that is no soil, you know, no planting, only all false things. That's what I was shown. Everything inside that bubble was false. And so many of the things were of pictures and the children and the adults asking this question, why did we kill nature? Why did we destroy our planet when they can't go outside the bubble? You know, they will never experience a forest. And we want, I want everyone in the world to experience a forest, to experience the river, you know, the grass, all of the plants. Like I, I love these because when we came here first, there was so little light coming in that these weren't growing. And since we got the light to come in, look at the size of some of them. And some of them are even bigger. They're appearing everywhere. And they're a fern as well. And I just love them. And this is another type of fern, I believe, as well. And they're appearing everywhere now. And of course this, I don't know what the name this is, but again, it's another wildflower that I'm afraid we call a weed, but they're not weeds. We need them. They are very beautiful. Oh, look at this one when I see where I'm standing first. Look at that fern, look at the way it's growing in there and look, and again, that's because we've got light. We've taken out a lot of that, um, what do you call it? That green stuff to let the light in. So we're replacing nature. And look at these. You know, these are just growing naturally wild. Um, and again, I love it. Yes, we've taken out so much of the laurel that was knocking down all the trees, that was letting nothing come up through the growth. And you see all of this here. I love the way the bramble is in the forest. So I'm a little bit confused. In the forest here, we have a lot of blossom. But I was out along a hedgerow and I couldn't find any blossom. And yet that hedgerow gets a huge amount of light. Unless it has something to do with pollution again. Because I love making jam. So please God, if I'm home in time in September, um, I'll be making jam out of these and of course sharing it with the birds and I remember one day I was with my daughter and we were picking them for jam and we walked along like as if you were walking along here and there was a load of berries here and there was a little mouse hanging on not minding the thorns at all hanging on and eating a berry and it was the very time I didn't have my phone. And it didn't stop. We just stood there looking at it, talking. And it was just enjoying eating the berries. You know, we should be able to do that with nature. We should be able to become one with nature that it doesn't fear us and we don't fear it. But at the moment, it's not like that. We just want to kill all the time, which is so sad. So I'll bring you for just a little walk up. Oh, I have to show you this. I know I love being out in nature, um, but just look at this. And again, 
it's another tree. And see that big tree there? Eventually that big tree is going to fall. And you always have to test the ground. Eventually that tree is going to fall because it's growing out of the bank. But I hope it stays there for another 30 years or something, but I'm not sure. Oh, come quietly, come quietly. Look down there, brown trout. Can you spot it? See, follow my finger. It's nearly the color of the rocks. Its tail is slightly moving. It's a brown trout. Can you see it? Just right there. And it's about that length. Head to the tip of its tail. It's not moving, just this tail is slightly moving. Ah, it moved. Did you get it? <laughs> Good. Just so beautiful. Do you see more? Oh, that's lovely. It's great to see that you got that, the trout. And we have to protect the fish in our rivers. We can't be going fishing and taking them out. We've got to put them back in. Like I fish and I love fishing. But one thing my dad always taught me and the angels, if you don't need it for food, it must go back in. And he used to have a rule because we did live on a lot of fish because we were poor. But, you know, if a fish was that size, we were not allowed to take it out. It had to go back in. It had to be at least that size before my dad would take it for dinner. But we never, we never mistreat it. And if my dad caught enough of fish to bring home for a meal, and he caught more after, they'd always go back, always. Um, because we have to protect our rivers and every creature that lives in our rivers. And of course, we have otters here as well. Um, I didn't see the otter this year yet, but um, Ned and his dad has seen the otter you know, they've seen the badger, I've seen the red squirrel, and of course the, the woody woodpecker, as I call it, and the, the kingfisher, and of course lots of dragonflies down there as well. Just look at the, aren't they so beautiful? Look at that color, and a butterfly. You, you have to be quick to catch them. But you should never kill anything. And I'm always saying, you know, if you shouldn't be killing the flies in your house because the number of insects and even flies has dropped. And if they keep dropping, more and more birds will disappear. And imagine going into a forest and you'd never hear the sound of a bird. We would have done that we would have caused that by killing insects, whether it's with chemicals or ourselves, um, because we don't like them in our house. I'm always chasing them out. And they get in the window, run over, open it, and let it, let it fly away. So I'm just saying to you, come with me down here and watch your feet and look at this lovely fern again and this beautiful one here. And I'm going to, oh, look at these paw marks. What were these? I'm not quite sure, but I'm down here now in the water. And there has been birds down here. And I'm just going to touch the water. And it's so beautiful. You know, it's so cool. I'd love to get in there <laughs> because today in Ireland it is quite warm and I think the Irish were just not used to that heat. 
but it's beautiful. But look at the stones, like they're shaped. And here's more different colors, the tiny little ones. God knows where they have come from. I often remember as a kid out fishing with my dad and come to an area like this and I'd take off my shoes, my socks and would walk across to an area like that and just enjoy the water. Um, my dad would give me a stick. Do we have a stick here? Well, if I had a stick, I would be measuring the depth of the water to see could I get across to the far side. So the centre there is deep, but then it gets shallow again, you see the way you see the stone. And the more I allow myself to see, so the camera might be able to see more, you can see the stones, that big stone there, and the smaller ones because the light shining on them. And then it goes down into a little dip and starts back up again. Now, if I wasn't on the film shoot and hadn't got jeans on me, I would go in and, what would you say, experiment and enjoy the touch of the water. I just love free flowing water and it's so clean. You know, it's quite clean here. And I love that. And, and just one of the other little creature, creatures that I found in this river another day was the shrimp. And seemingly if shrimp are in the river, the river is clean as well. And when you see lots of flies on the water, you know, with their legs, um, it's another good positive sign as well. So I'm just so glad that this river is quite clean. But again, we still have to protect it to stop it from becoming polluted. Because I, I, I want every creature to live so every human being will live as well. So we will hear the laughter of children, not the tears of children, but the laughter and the laughter of parents and teenagers and, and daddies and, you know, boys shouting, wanting to climb a tree. You know, the simple, lovely things, not sitting in a, in a room with a screen in front of you, but out in nature and being connected to it and just feeling the energy of it. Just look at this even, you know, this beautiful moss growing on this branch. And of course, another tree growing out of it. So this is something you know now, maybe you didn't know it before, but I'm sure there is many of you who didn't know that. Um, and it's just so lovely to see. And just the light coming through and dancing off the leaves. You know, the magic the magic of it, you know, and, and how soft this feels. You know, it's, it's good for your skin. And just looking down there as well, lovely blue dragonfly I saw again. Today we're seeing a lot of dragonflies. And I see a brown one. Sometimes I'm not quite sure what the name of the brown one is, but that one looks like as if it's a bit red. If you come closer, I'd get a better look. Oh, see two lovely blue ones across the river. They're probably trying to get a drink of water, maybe. But just listen to the birds. kind of listen to the silence of nature and it responding to you. 
I loved that wind because the trees were talking to you. They know that we are talking about them. They can feel the connection. So they're responding and nature is responding. I, I just love it. So I, I thank all nature and I ask nature to help us to connect more and to realize that nature empowers us, but we must empower nature too. We must give back and we have to give back in abundance because we want to live. We want to live. And I know everything at the moment is about technology, but we need to live. Children, teenagers need to connect back to nature and open spiritually and, and see the light and the energy of nature and feel its presence and its power and its peace and calmness and it's oneness with us. I always say when you're given something for nothing, you mistreat it. You couldn't care less whether it smashes and breaks. We have been given this planet, this universe, free. But we're doing the same thing. We're mistreating it, but we have to stop because we can't live without it. So stop breaking it. Let's enjoy repairing it. And I would say, don't be looking on, what would you say, the value, because mankind has put that word value on things, that things cost. But nature has been free. It belongs to us all. This planet belongs to us all not just to one person or not just to a group of people. It belongs to us all, each and every one of us. And I just want to hug it and say thank you. So I'm saying thank you to nature. And I love you all and God bless. <laughs>